if we could get every human to see Earth from space, it would change the way we are on this Earth to each other, and it would probably inspire so many people to do great things. That planet is everything we know that's associated with humans and humanity, and it's really important for us to think about that every day as not only as we take care of the planet, but in our daily interactions with those around us, that this is all we've got, and we're all in it together. The first time that you launch on a rocket ship is very exciting and memorable and something that is forever imprinted on your mind. That first instance of a countdown hitting zero and the rocket leaving the planet and there's only the one thing that you're sure of is that you've left planet Earth and that's a weird feeling as a human. I mean we fly in airplanes but you know you're just going to go up and come back down but when you're in a rocket ship and a rocket takes off from the planet you know you've left the planet and you are now one of very few individuals representing seven billion people on the planet that's orbiting the earth trying to do things that are going to be important for science and our futures. I haven't been in space but I, <laughs> I can assume that it's absolutely incredible. So my grandfather was an assistant flight director for those Apollo missions so I grew up at the dinner table hearing about Jim and I and Apollo basically every week and seeing the pictures from the actual moon landings and the mission control pictures was just very inspiring to me, seeing the excitement and the joy. So that's something that really sparked my love for technology was seeing all that and the energy that everybody had during that time period. So one of the things I've been wondering is how has technology influenced your path to become an astronaut? What, have you had any specific experiences developing technology or anything that really interests you that led you toward this? You know, I'm trained as a geoscientist, as a geophysicist, and I was always interested in what technologies we could use with humans or even robotic missions for planetary exploration, and we're, we're doing that now. When I first uh, attended Purdue University in 1986, that was my interest, that I was going to go and learn about geology and geophysics and mining technology, and then someday I want to apply that to another orbiting body, maybe in our solar system or beyond. And we saw some of that work during Apollo, and I hope that as we return to the moon and develop permanent presence and the ability to go back and forth to the surface and have a sustainable habitat there, and develop the Lunar Gateway, that we'll start to see some of those technologies be applied again and that the new programs will encompass some of those things. So that's exciting to me to think that there really is a tie that I, that I dreamed there would be and should be and that, that it's beneficial to exploration. Just as it's beneficial here on Earth, it can be beneficial in space. It's also exciting to me to see that that's something in my lifetime that could potentially happen is you know, a lunar pathway where we've developed technology that we can consistently stay on the moon. That's something that has been really in my mind's eye since a young child is uh, personally going to the moon, spending time there. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing it happen soon. It looks like there might be an opportunity eventually for you and uh, many other people that have that drive and that goal. And I think it's important to not ever lose sight of those, you know, those intentions because one way or another you may find yourself doing just that, you know, walking around with boots on the moon. The thing that's most exciting to me is the robotics. So we actually work out of here at NASA mm -hmm. and we developed these robots and it's just a high school robotics team. But what I found is through working with NASA engineers, it's been absolutely incredible seeing the process as they go through making lunar rovers or working on getting to the moon in 2024. Well, 2024 is going to come up pretty quickly, so <laughs> you can go off to school for one semester, but you're going to have to get back over here pretty quickly to uh, to help with the development, right? We need landers sure. being built soon and probably some rover capability, and of course suits are going to be critical for us, so I'm excited that you're interested in providing some support for us because we're going to need all the help we can get. So if you were in my place right now, what mm -hmm. do you think would be the most important to you, having all the experience you have? towards looking at your future? My advice would be to stay focused and choose your colleagues wisely. Try to find like-minded people who are really determined to make great things happen because I think that will allow you to yourself stay focused and keep your eye on the prize, that goal that you've set for yourself. And don't underestimate the possibility that you can do whatever it is you want. You really can. It's, it's a cliche, but it, it's true. You can do anything you put your mind to. You just have to believe in it and just keep marching one step at a time, day after day, and you'll eventually get to the point that you're, that you're targeting. <laughs>